Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Okay, today, I'd like to continue to discuss the noise in the communication system. Okay, so for this video, I mainly want to concentrate three types of noise. Okay, the first one that I'm going to concentrate will be known as thermal noise. There are several names for thermal noise. Okay, so in short, they are also called Johnson Nyquist noise, also white noise. So this video, I'm going to describe what is thermal noise and also how to calculate thermal noise. The next noise that I will emphasize will be short noise. Okay, so again, I will have a little example to show it to you. How can we actually calculate the short noise? Last but not least, on the frequent noise. Okay, so frequent noise is actually dominate at low frequency. Okay, so over here again, I will describe what is frequent noise and also how can we actually calculate frequent noise. Okay, so this will be the part three series discussion okay, for the noise in the communication system. So guys, if you're keen to know more about noise in the communication system, okay, please take a look on the playlist under the description. Okay, over there, you will be able to find a series of discussion okay, for noise in the communication system. This is my email. If you have any question regards on this discussion, okay, please drop me an email. Okay, or if not, okay, if you want to have a faster response, you are always welcome to ask me through the comment. Okay, before I continue, okay, I'd like to urge you guys to help this channel by like this video. Okay, please click the like video now. For those who are new to this channel, please consider to subscribe and turn on your notification bell. Once again, thank you so much for strong support. Okay, so this diagram here shows frequency versus the noise voltage. As I mentioned early on, at the low frequency, typically the frequent noise will dominate, okay, which means that the frequent noise will be an influencer noise at the low frequency. As you can see from here, the noise actually decay with frequency. Okay, so in short, the higher the frequency, the lesser the frequent noise. Okay, until they reach this corner frequency. Okay, so the situation changed completely. Okay, after the corner frequency, the frequent noise will be less influential at the high frequency. So at high frequency, mainly thermal and short noise will dominate. Okay, so this is in fact like a bathtub. Okay, but this video, as I mentioned earlier on, I'm going to discuss only on frequent noise, thermal noise, and also short noise. So I mainly want to concentrate okay, on the low frequency and also slightly higher and to explain okay, what kind of noise will dominate okay, at the different kinds of frequency. Okay, as I want to highlight this again, at low frequency, frequent noise will dominate. At higher frequency, thermal and short noise will be dominate. And in fact, you can see here, it is almost flat. Okay, let's quickly understand what is actually a thermal noise. Okay, the thermal noise, in fact, is the most common type of noise. Okay, in fact, they present okay, in all analog radio frequency and baseband circuit. Okay, it occurs in device ranging from simple resistor to bipolar and MOSFET transistor. So in short, any electronic products, you definitely will have thermal noise because you can't avoid resistor, you can't avoid bipolar or MOSFET transistor. So in short, any RF component, okay, you will definitely will be affected by this thermal noise. Okay, thermal noise is defined as the electronic noise that is generated by the thermal educations of electrons inside an electrical conductor at equivalent. Okay, in another word, noise is always generated when a current passes through a resistor. Okay, so in short, when you have current flow through a resistor, this thermal noise will be great. Okay, the thermal noise is also known by several other names, okay, including Johnson Nyquist noise. It's Johnson noise and Nyquist noise. So in short, okay, they are known as Johnson Nyquist noise or Johnson noise or Nyquist noise. Okay, so this is why. Okay, so this name is, is actually referred to the fact that the noise will first detect and measure by Johnson. Okay, so Johnson is the first one that measure and detect this thermal noise. And later on, 
This is explained by Harry Nyquist. So therefore, you can see over here, Johnson actually first measure this thermal noise, followed by explained by Harry Nyquist. Okay, so therefore, this is also so called known as Johnson Nyquist noise or Johnson noise and Nyquist noise. Okay, the spectrum of thermal noise is flat. Okay, as you can see earlier on, you can see that the thermal noise is flat over here. Okay, so this is what it means over a wide range of frequency. Okay, so at a higher frequency, which is why I often refer them as white noise. Okay, because they are flat. And despite this, this is the most commonly called thermal noise. So basically, in short, this thermal noise is the most common noise among all these noise. Okay, where is actually origin? Okay, thermal noise actually arise from the inherent random thermal motion of electron in a material. Okay, as temperature increase, the kinetic energy of the electron also increase, leading to more pronounced thermal noise. So in short, okay, you can imagine that this thermal noise is actually with respond okay, to temperature. When temperature increase, the thermal noise also increase. Frequency. Okay, thermal noise is often referred as white noise okay, because it has a constant power spectrum density over a wide range of frequency. Okay, so in short, it's like a DC. Okay, when the frequency actually increase, they are only just a little bit increase or decrease. So in short, they are actually having this constant power spectrum density over a wide range of frequency. Okay, so this means that the thermal noise is present at all frequency and it's actually not depend on the frequency. So in short, for this thermal noise, okay, it's actually not influenced by frequency. Magnitude. Okay, the power of thermal noise in a resistor is directly proportional to its temperature and also resistance. So over here, you can see that how big will be the thermal noise. Okay, they are actually depend on the temperature and also the resistor value. And it is indirectly of the type of material okay, or the frequency of operation. Okay, so basically, they are not depend Okay, what are the types of material that you are actually use and they are also not depend on frequency. Implication. Okay, the thermal noise set a fundamental limit okay, on the sensitivity of electronic device and system, okay, particularly in communication and signal processing. Okay, for example, in radio receiver, thermal noise define the minimum signal level that can be detected. So this thermal noise actually play a crucial role in any form of wireless communication. So in short, you can see here, the thermal noise actually define okay, the minimum signal level that we can actually detect. So hence, thermal noise is very essential okay, to any form of wireless communication. Okay, how can we actually calculate the thermal noise okay, by this equation here? So this is the thermal noise voltage okay, from here, 4KTRB. Okay, so 4 is a constant. K is a Bosnian constant. Okay, so basically it's a fixed constant number, which is 1.38 times 10 to minus 23 joules per the K. Okay, so T is the absolute temperature in Kelvin. Okay, so basically R is the resistance in ohm. B is the bandwidth in hertz, okay, over which the noise is measured. So this is actually the thermal noise voltage. Okay, the noise is actually proportional to the square root of the product. Okay, according to the temperature, resistance, and also the bandwidth. Okay, not on the frequency, but on the bandwidth. Okay, you can see here, this is a constant number. This is the temperature. Okay, so this is the resistor value. This is actually the bandwidth. Okay, a sample is sometimes cool to this lower temperature during measurement. Okay, so as to reduce the thermal noise. Okay, so in order to get an ideal condition, we actually reduce the temperature as much as possible. When we actually reduce the temperature, you can see that we actually also will have a smaller thermal noise. Okay, since noise level depends on temperature, okay, we often assume that the measurements are done at room temperature. Okay, so at room temperature, we assume them to be at 300 Kelvin or 27 degrees Celsius or 80% degree Fahrenheit here. Okay, so this is the formula okay, that we actually calculate based on room temperature. So you just need to enter the resistor in kilo ohm and the bandwidth in kilohertz. Then you just punch your calculator. You can actually get the voltage in terms of microvolt per RMS value.
Okay, so when the resistor R is 1 kilo ohm, okay, and the frequency band is 1 kilohertz, okay, the noise is 0 0.126 microvolt, okay, which you can see based on the equation over here. So let's say this is 1 kilo ohm, and this is 1 kilohertz, and therefore the noise will be 0 0.126, okay, as it illustrates over here. Okay, this voltage is invisible because it is always generated as long as there is resistor. Okay, so in short, if the resistor value is 1 kilo, 1 kilo ohm and the bandwidth that you're going to utilize will be 1 kilo and this form of noise is always generated as long as you have resistor. Okay, it can be ignored in circuit with voltage of 5 volt or 3.3 volt. Okay, so this number, okay, basically they are significantly bigger as compared to 0 0.126 micro volt. So therefore, if you are going to utilize circuit that using this high V or high voltage, okay, you can actually ignore this kind of noise. Okay, however, it has significant effect on voltage. Okay, for example, if you receive a signal, okay, which typically just a few microvolt, this become comparable and may become a key issue whether we can receive or we cannot receive the signal. Okay, so in another word, okay, this noise level cannot be ignored in small signal management, and therefore the this form of noise okay, must be taken into account. Okay, the thermal noise power okay, is the power associated with the thermal noise and they can be simply calculated by this formula here. So this is the thermal noise power. So the K is the still the same thing. So it's still the Bosnian constant. The T will be the temperature. The B will be the bandwidth. Okay, so let's quickly understand how can we do this with an example. Okay, suppose we have these following parameters. We have the temperature, Okay, room temperature 300 K Kelvin, resistor okay, 1000 ohm, bandwidth 1 megahertz. Okay, so how to calculate the thermal noise voltage will be using this formula. Okay, so 4 is a constant number. So this is a Boltzmann constant, which is 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23. Okay, this temperature will be Kelvin. Okay, this is not to the power of 3, it's the Kelvin. So therefore, I have 300 here. The resistor is 1000. And this is the bandwidth, which is 1 meg. So if you punch your calculator, you can calculate that the thermal noise voltage will be equal to 4.069 times 10 to the minus 6 volt. Okay, how can we actually calculate the thermal noise power? Okay, by this equation, okay, how you do this is quite similar. So the K term is here. The temperature, 300 Kelvin, and the bandwidth. And again, if you punch your calculator, okay, you can easily get the thermal noise power Okay, as shown over here, 4.14 times 10 power minus 51. Okay, sometimes it is essential okay, for us to convert into dBm. But at this moment, I just take this as a raw form, as a ratio. Okay, so before I continue on a short noise, okay, please help okay, to like this video if you have learned something from this video. And again, okay, like I emphasize, if this video benefit you, please consider to subscribe and turn on your notification bell. Okay, let me continue the discussion on the short noise. Okay, short noise is a type of electronics noise that occur okay, due to the discrete nature of electric charge. Okay, it arises when charge carrier okay, such as electron or holes cross a potential barrier such as in a semiconductor device or vacuum tube. Okay, so we don't need to do well so much on this. But in short, okay, so what is actually a short noise is basically a charge carrier, okay, either electron or hole, they basically need to cross a potential barrier. Okay, in a semiconductor, if you still remember what you have learned in the school day, there is a barrier that they need to cross, and because of this, they actually generate this short noise. Okay, the random arrival of this carrier at a detector or an electronic component, they actually led to the fluctuation okay which means that there is up and down in the current which are perceived as noise okay it is similar to thermal noise okay that is actually follow this poison distribution and has a flat power this spectrum okay as i showed it to you earlier on okay for thermal and also short noise they actually has a flat power spectrum okay which means that they behave like a dc a flat one don't vary with frequency However, okay, it different in that it's not directly affected by temperature. Okay, if magnitude is proportional to the square root of the direct current, okay, which is the DC current here, 
through the device and they can be a function of signal amplitude. Okay, so this will be the short noise in terms of ampere, RMS ampere. So the Q is basically the electron charge, okay, which is 1.6 times 10 power minus 19 coulombs. Okay, so this will be the amount of current that pass through and this will be the bandwidth that you actually measure. Let's take a look on the origin of short noise. Okay, short noise occur okay, due to the statistical nature of the flow of discrete charge carrier, which I have explained earlier on. Okay, unlike thermal noise, which is related to the thermal educations of electron, the okay, short noise is actually inherent in the quantum nature of charge. So basically, again, this short noise is something that we cannot prevent. Okay, it's actually nature. Okay, this poison distribution, the number of charge carrier pass through a barrier in a given time interval, okay, they actually follow this poison distribution, okay, leading to the fluctuation in current, okay, which means that they actually went up or down. Okay, this randomness is what generates short noise. Proportional to current, okay, if you see at the equation, you can see that this short noise is actually equivalent to current. Okay, so when current increase, the short noise increase. When the current reduce, the short noise also reduce. Okay, the intensity of short noise is actually proportional to the average current that flow through the device. Okay, especially okay, the noise power actually increase okay, with the average current. Okay, frequency independent. Okay, so early on, okay, based on the chart, you can see that short noise actually don't vary with frequency. So therefore, it is so-called frequency independent. The short noise has a white noise spectrum, flat one, which means that they had a most equal power across all frequency. Okay, so this is an example of short noise. Okay, let me quickly work out an example. How can we actually calculate the short noise? Okay, so over here you can see that okay, we have a current of one microampere okay, and a measurement bandwidth of one megahertz. Okay, so this two here, so this is a Q, which is a fixed term here, which is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 16. So the current is one microampere. The bandwidth is one meg. So from here, you can easily calculate that this short noise will be 5.659 times 10 to the minus 10 ampere. Okay, keep this in mind. This is actually a RMS value. Okay, let's move on to the last noise, okay, which is the flicker noise. Okay, so this is maybe a little bit challenged because this actually happened at the low frequency. The frequency noise is also known as 1 over F, okay, which is the frequency noise. Okay, or we know this as ping noise. Okay, it's actually a type of electronic noise that occur in many electronic device and system. Okay, it is characterized okay, by its power spectrum density, which inverse proportional to the frequency. Okay, so in short, the higher the frequency, the lesser the frequency noise, okay, which means that the noise power actually increase as the frequency decrease. Or you can say that the noise power actually decrease when the frequency increase. Okay, so therefore this make it more significant at lower frequency and hence this is sometimes we call a low frequency noise. Okay, so this is a formula to calculate the frequency noise. Okay, so later on, okay, I will have an example how can we actually calculate this frequency noise. Okay, so over here, you can see that there are several terms here. So the K term is called the frequent noise coefficient. Okay, so this is a constant number that depends on the device and also the material that you're going to use. Frequency basically is where you are measuring the noise. Okay, the power spectrum density, okay, the power per unit frequency at the frequency F. Okay, so let's take a look on the example later on to understand this better. Okay, before I go to the example, let's quickly understand okay, where is the origin okay, of flicker noise. Okay, flicker noise is commonly observed in the variety of electronics components such as transistor, resistor, and even in complex systems like the op amplifier. Okay, it is often caused by the fluctuations in the flow of charge carrier okay, like electron through a material or interface. Okay, in semiconductor, it can be due to trap in the material where charge carrier can temporarily get stuck, causing okay, the up and down in current. Okay, Fickle noise is present in many physical systems beyond electronics, okay, including biological, finance, and even geo system here. 
Okay, it often represents a significant portion of the total noise in low frequency application. Okay, so in short, frequent noise actually concern. Okay, especially at low frequency, high frequency you can actually ignore the frequent noise. The impact on circuit okay, in electronic circuit, frequent noise can degrade the performance of precision analog circuit like those used in instrumental and sensor application. Engineers must often design circuit with frequent noise in mind okay, using techniques like filtering, shielding, and careful component selection to minimize its effect. Okay, so these are so-called the impact on circuit. So engineers like we okay, must know how to design to minimize the frequent noise. Okay, for example, we can use techniques like some form of filtering, some form of shielding, and also the careful selection of the correct component Okay, to keep this speaker noise as little as possible. Okay, let's take a look on the example. Okay, how can we actually calculate the speaker noise? Okay, for example, okay, we have a device with a speaker noise coefficient. So this is a K term. Okay, and we want to calculate the speaker noise power spectrum density at a frequency of 100 hertz, and we are given this alpha is equals to one. Okay, so this is the formula that I show it to you on the previous page. So over here, you can see that the frequency is 100. The question mentioned is about 100 hertz. Okay, so this is the K term, which is 1 times 10 to the minus 12, which is over here. Frequency is 100. Okay, so this alpha term is equal to 1. So from here, you can calculate that this uh, frequency noise will be equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 14 foot square per hertz. Okay, so what does this mean? Okay, this means that the power spectrum density of the frequency noise at 100 hertz Okay, for this device is this value, okay, which we had calculated earlier on, which is 1 times 10 to the minus 14 voltage squared over hertz. Okay, this value tells us how much noise power is present in a 1 hertz bandwidth center at 100 hertz. Okay, so in short, over here, you can see that the location that we actually measure is at 100 hertz and the bandwidth is actually 1 hertz. Okay, so with this, okay, today I have discussed three types of noise. First one is thermal noise, followed by short noise, followed by frequent noise. Frequent noise actually dominate at low frequency. At higher frequency, okay, the thermal noise and the short noise become much more significant. However, it is considered to be flat, which means that they don't actually change with frequency. But for the frequent noise, when frequency actually increase, the noise actually reduced for frequent noise. So with this, I'd like to end my discussion. Okay, please sub to like and subscribe. Once again, thank you so much for strong support. I hope to see you guys soon. Bye for now. Thank you.